Yeah, you do. All right, so let's go ahead and um, open the meeting. It's uh, Monday, October 16th, here at the Moortown um, Town, uh, the office building, the John Hogeville meeting room. Um, and we're the Moortown Select Board. It looks like we have a full house here with uh, all members present. We've got Sasha as well. And we've got um, a few different folks from Ray to Stefan and Carol. So I'm going to start with um, admitting dates to Stapleton. He's on Zoom. All right. Hey, Dave. Hey, how you doing? Well, how are you doing tonight? Well, I'm a little late getting to something, so I hope it won't take too long. <laughs> All right. So we're we just opened the meeting. We're uh, looking for uh, public comment right now. Okay. So let me start with um, here in the audience. Is there anyone here for general public comments? Uh, so I sent over a VT alert paper uh, so that I can. Do the VT alerts through the emergency management? Yes, I saw that. Did everyone okay. see that email from Stefan? Yeah. It basically, it basically is uh, formality so that I can, in the event of an emergency, send out a VT alert to the Moortown residents, you know, with pertinent information, whether they need to evacuate or stay in their home, or if there's some big event going on that requires, you know, an emergency reach out to them. All right. And I went through a training to become certified as well. Oh, very good stuff, huh? Thank you. So, um, John, you want to make a motion on that or just so moved? How does that so, so moved? So moved. Well, how does that work? Uh, can we get a second first, then we can talk about a second. Oh. Okay, John, go ahead. I mean, uh, well, how does that work? So far? Okay. Is it through our cell phones, you mean? Yes, yeah, so if you're signed up for VT Alert, which That'll be up and coming for town meeting. I'm going to have pamphlets <coughs> and be pushing VT alerts. Mm -hmm. If you sign up on your cell phone, it comes through as a text message. I can make it come through even if your phone's on silent. At, you know, send a notification anyway to make sure that you get it. If you're in the if it's, code, if it's yeah. life and limb immediate, I can force it to call you even if your phone's. So, but that's that's above and beyond where I ever yeah. want to get to. But it's. It's a good thing, so like if we do have flooding and the village needs to evacuate, I can send to Moortown that the village needs to evacuate sure. when and if it ever becomes a thing. So you can but pinpoint a certain location. And you can go on the map and pinpoint certain parts and areas as well. Uh -huh. And you can do it so it'll call, you know, the folks that don't have cell phones still or have spotty servicing have so it'll call a landline as well. Someone has to fill that form out. Uh, so it's an online portal that I have, as long as you folks sign the, the form saying that I can be the, the primary contact and, and use it, and that I really am the emergency management director, basically, then I go into a portal online and can send it out as needed. Is it just that letter that Tom needs to sign? Yes, okay. that is it. Just that way they know that I'm really a person that has a the town, yeah, has a town's best interest. But if someone doesn't sign up or doesn't come to town meeting or doesn't, you know, I don't know, read front porch forum or the valley reporter. The only, the only way that they would ever get any alert is if we push it through to all cell phones in that geographic area or all phone lines in that geographic area. Would be the only way those folks would get it. So we really just have to do uh, outreach to, yep. to the public. Yep, I'm getting, uh, getting pamphlets for town meeting, and you know we can figure something out. I might even consider doing a mailer to every household. Yeah. Well, maybe we could put it in with the town report. Oh, that's a good idea. Town yeah. report. <laughs> we could do a we could probably do a page of, in the town report of it. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 Yep, that would be a great idea. Or a little flyer in there. Like Alright. Any other questions here? We'll they get really old after a while sometimes. You will, not, you will not receive them from me for anything short of, you know, an emergency. Mm -hmm. 
We don't have boil water notices or anything in Moortown, so. I love them, but it makes me feel warm inside. I get them for every road closure that's like oh. around my foyer, and I get a text message, an email, and a phone call. Well, we won't have that here in town. But, for us. <laughs> but anything, like if you send it out, like if there's a boil water notice, like we can do that in Berlin, we'll just send it out. Hey, there's a boy water notice and everyone gets it and sees it. Cool. All in favor, vote aye. So just while we have Stefan, so we're gonna you're gonna do the emergency uh Yes. Uh also okay. tomorrow evening at six fifteen PM we'll be testing the emergency siren on the top of the fire station. It's been several years since it's been tested and I just want to make sure it still works. I've been putting it out on front porch forum, I just put out a third one today. I put it out, I created a Facebook page for emergency management in Moortown. I put it out on that. I'm trying to give the outreach as much as possible to as many people. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, I have put it out a lot and certainly they can reach out to me. Thank you, Stefan. I know you're gonna be around for a couple things, so. Is that like a two minute mass or? Uh, so I'm told it's three minutes. I've never actually activated it. I'm told it's three minutes or it was Prior, so. Are you sure it's going to go off one? <laughs> if you get started? Yeah, so it, it has a wind up period and then a wind down period. So if three minutes comes and goes and it's still blaring, I'll turn it off manually, but it'll still wind down. So it'll take another minute or so to wind down. I think it's mainly just in this valley that you'll hear it. Uh, you won't be able to hear it, you know, up on anything this side of the top of the mountain road. You know, John might be able to hear it up at his house, so it's it reaches pretty far. I'm told. I yeah, haven't well, I haven't actually ever heard it myself outside yeah, of right. being right here. My wife has just asked me about those. She's like, "Remember the day when they used to have these loud sirens? They just went off." Well, well, no, I, I think they still have them. Uh, you know, mainly the people in the village are going to be the ones that. And we'll be you know, at the fire station for training anyway, so if they show up, we'll be able to tell them. Six fifteen a.m. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Time to get up. All right. So let's move ahead. Um, since I was asking for public comment, I know uh, Colin Noel came in and I wanted to speak tonight, right, Colin? I did. Yeah, yeah. I did send a letter in as well. Um, I'm not I guess, you know, I've been to many of these meetings and have been asking for updates on the status of uh, my class four road and uh, any repairs that I was verbally told by um, a couple members of the road crew uh, would be completed prior to winter. Uh, we've had a, a few events up there in the last month that uh, it raised my concern level when I thought I should come back. Um, Tom mentioned that uh, somebody would get in touch with me and about my phone number and email the last time I was here. Uh, nobody did. Um, which is, you know, just frustrating on the communication point. Um, but two Saturdays ago, I got stuck in the middle of the road um, because the road has been rebuilt with sand. It's an inferior material than it was prior to the disaster in July, and uh, we got to get it up to where it was prior to that disaster. You know, that's in our our town bylaws uh, to rebuild to that status. And uh, the drainage has been plugged uh, when they brought the grader up there to do some of the work. And uh, there was a unfortunate event this Saturday. My neighbor passed away, and the emergency vehicles couldn't get trouble accessing as well. So I just wanted to try to get some resolution to this matter. Winter's coming, and I know no work is going to be completed once uh, the snow's here. So. Thanks. Well, first of all, I uh, apologize for some of not getting back to you. Uh, you were really, really pretty good communication, but um, anyways, it got lost uh, as far as who was going to call them. Call you back. Yep. Um, I did talk to Martin today about the situation, and he said that um, first, right, he and you talked, and this is Brownsville Road, uh, about yeah. three weeks ago. I think it was right after that. <coughs> the time frame was working, but no one got back to you. Yep. Um, from what I got from Martin, first, um, he, and he was addressing some of the letter I forwarded it to him. Um, he did say that all the fill and everything they used in the road up there was um, plant mix. It wasn't. But you can come look for yourself. That's incorrect. All right. I'm just. That's what I was. I would. I would love if it was plant mix. It would not be having these issues, and you wouldn't see me every week. Right. I mean, I'd love to attend these meetings because I think the 
matters that are addressed are important, but I wouldn't be voicing my concerns. <coughs> now, Ray, again, during this, this call with Martin, he indicated that you guys talked and you guys both thought the road was in yeah, I, I broke the road uh, right after that letter uh, three weeks ago, and it was my <coughs> so uh, my 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 sense is, is that the road was better now than it was before the floods. So I went, I went I went back up there over the weekend. Uh, I believe it was Sunday morning after the rain on Saturday, and and again I drove up through there. I and I have a truck. I only use two wheel drive. Um, I didn't see where there was any problem up there. So there's two portions of the road that were rebuilt with sand. The drainage has been plugged and has not been fixed. Um, if they would put a top coat or some plant mix there, that would probably help with the, uh, the sinkage. I have my four-wheel drive vehicle with my wife and child stuck that Saturday night. I smoothed out the road with my tractor on Sunday. Um, I didn't see it come off. So I went to the, 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 the split in the road. Yes, sir. Where your driveway splits off goes yep. off. That's as far as I went. Yeah. That's and, the end of the road. Yes, sir. So down that hill towards where uh, Jay's trailer is, yeah. is where I got stuck in the sand. Stefan, can you do you know if that road was rebuilt with plant mix? Um, it was rebuilt with plant mix to just oh, below the camp, Jay's camp. And then from there on out, it was the material that was there with push. There's, there's two. Around. We didn't actually bring in anything other than plant mix. It's the native right. what was there that we put yeah. back in that scripture. And there's some major issues there, especially with the drainage that got blocked. I mean, it's just going to continue to erode the beautiful work that you and the team have done down below with the grant money that we all received in 2020. You know, if we don't mitigate that drainage and we don't take care of the road, it's all just going to crumble and we're going to be back here next year. I, I agree with you about the, the crumbling and such. Um, in my opinion, though, it is better than pre-flood. It wasn't draining great prior to the flood either. There were two culverts that were in question that you did work on that improved the drainage. Those culverts were lost in the flood and were replaced, uh, one by the town and one by Gary at the bottom of the road. So there's two stretches of the road that do not have any plant mix on them, and it's, it, it's quicksand when it's wet. I mean, it's worse than flood season in October, guys. Now, is this part of the, this is a, a class 4B, is that, that's correct, right? Yeah, correct. My only request is that the road is rebuilt to the standard before the flood, which should be passable in October. I understand that I live on a class four road. But so I the, the drainage and the, the top surface material is worse than it was prior. I drove up not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, and I made it into a road. Yep. I mean, I know there was, like, there was a soft spot there. Yep, that there is Saturday was, evening, my wife and child were stranded in the car until I could get home, park my vehicle, walk to my home, for my tractor, and pull their vehicle out, and it's four-wheel drive. I can't have that happen in mud season or in the middle of winter with a 10-month-old baby. Right. Now, again, on Class 4B roads, uh, policy is, um, people who are living on them typically put correct surface material in. Have you, in have you put any right town policy, it should be rebuilt to the standard that it was prior to a disaster, and that has not been the case. Well, I, these, these two sections of the road are not what they were prior. I never had any issues there. I can attest what they've said is true. Some sections are definitely better, but the two sections that were rebuilt with the existing material are far worse and are impassable when it's wet. And the drainage is a huge issue. It was existent before, and now it is non-existent. Maybe it had some issues, but now it doesn't drain at all. It comes down the base of that road. Well, I, I guess um, I should probably take a walk up there with you. With um, we'll take Ray and Martin, three of us, um, and we'll, we'll take a walk and see what. Great. I've got photos of before and after if you'd like. That would be that would be probably okay. me, the best. Is email or phone call better for you all? Probably email. 
to Sasha with that. Okay. Do you still have my uh, contact information on my? I'm sure we do. Yeah. Great. And yeah. Somebody's going to be in touch. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, we'll talk with amongst these guys either tonight or tomorrow to see and look at my schedule when I can. It might be um, over the weekend. Okay. Um, might work. That's the, for me. I'm just traveling a lot, so uh, we'll. Uh, I can work around Ray's schedule too. If I I can be yeah, I'm, there. I'm not available this weekend, but okay. I'm available prior to this weekend. All right, we'll look at or maybe even early. Well, you know, I, early I really morning. don't think it's going to take much material to you know mitigate these issues and too much drainage work, but it needs to be done. Otherwise, we're going to have bigger issues down the line. All right, well, we'll uh, certainly take a look at it, Colin. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and also, the Peach City Emergency Vehicle Park, uh, I was up there Sunday. The ambulance had a problem. Oh, it wasn't the ambulance, it was the trooper. It could have been used for error. Well, okay. I was going to say, because I, I was up there with the ambulance, so yeah, I should turn around. But the ambulance right there in the same scene. So, thank you for going well. Yeah. Okay. So, Dave, can you jump on for um, public comment? Let me see if you can me. Hey, Dave? Yep. Are you on for public comment tonight? No, I'm just going to sit so, in the VA discussion. Okay. Well, very good. Um, so now, if there's no other public comments, uh, let's move forward. And next meeting agenda item is uh, the ZA position. And tonight we have uh, Carol Chamberlain. So you want to roll on up, Carol? Roll up. Thank you for coming tonight, Carol. Thank you. So as everyone is aware, we have been looking um, for planning, uh, for a zoning administrator. Um, this past Thursday, the Planning Commission um, had a meeting at, uh, the, I guess it was October 12th, so it was Thursday, and uh, there were Dave Stapleton, Deb Carroll, and John Schmelzer. Um, were there and interviewed Carol for the position and um, came back with a uh, out of executive session to uh, make a uh, motion to um, recommend to the select board that we hire you as our zoning administrator. Um, so here around the table, we take that recommendation very serious, but um, certainly have a few questions. So John, why don't we go ahead and, and, and start with, with you, so you can get to know Carol. Maybe you know Carol. Uh, I, I do. We uh, served together on the Ridge River, and um, you know the, the, she was on the Planning Commission, and um, I think it would be great to, to have Carol as our zoning administrator. Yeah, okay. very easy to work with and, and uh, very knowledgeable. Thanks. Currently, you are working for the state. Is that correct? Correct. And um, that this is something you'll be able to take on. You think you have enough out time to do? Yes, and I'm. The plan is to lessen state hours over the next few months, and then if there's more that you'd like the zone administrator position to pick up. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at um, your resume and also some of the other things that you could do. You're familiar with websites? To a degree. Yep. yep. <coughs> What else would you want to share here? What else would I want to share? Um, you're not going to ask me questions. You're going to make me come up with things. Um, well, I'm going to share this just because it's fun. When I was growing up, this is the whole siren thing. When I was growing up, um, the ambulance service at 6 a.m. if there was a snow day would blow their siren just once because that was when they still called the volunteers in their siren. So that was that was that's something I kind of miss. It was always fun to lie in bed and we would see the six o'clock. <laughs> it was going to be a snow day. Be a snow yeah, day. Yeah. 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 Um, but in terms of the zoning administrator, I, you know, I've always kind of enjoyed the work. I've, I'm, I enjoy the planning world, and um, I haven't totally perused more towns' zoning rules, and bylaws yet town plan, but I'm familiar with everything that goes into getting those created and enforcing them and following what's going on. 
Um, how many hours do you think you can start now? Well, that was one thing we weren't real clear about when we were talking about it the other night with the, when I was speaking with the Planning Commission. And I know she had 10 hours of office time. I didn't know if that was the extent of her hours or if she worked more than that. Each week was is different. Different. And we would certainly allow for more. And she said there was certainly plenty of things to do to, right. to take up that time. Um, but I, I would look at the budget and see where we are for the end of the year, but try to make sure we're, we're fitting within that. Um, but there's plenty of uh, things. You're, you're lucky you're coming in um, after Karen. Uh, uh -huh. Karen's done a lot of work in the last year to get things put back together. Organized. There have been a lot of things that hadn't been organized or done well. Um, and that's what we're hoping uh, to see continue. Right. Um, so I, and based on what um, Karen had to say, I, and based on what I've seen uh, through the, the recommendation and uh, other uh, people talking about your, what your qualities, I think uh, certainly you would work well here. Um, you know, we're a pretty hands-off board. Um, you know, we're here to support you, um, but as a zoning administrator, you know, you're, you're kind of on your own. Yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, Robin, what do you think of? Uh, well, one thing Karen brought up uh, is that our process is pretty manual. Is that something you're familiar with? There's not really any automation software, so it's all... All still paperwork. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. That was her biggest issue, I think, uh, getting all that done within the time frame. Uh -huh. That's... Is everything completely paper? There's there's no electronic recording of. Oh no! All the all okay. the all the documents and stuff are available on the right. website and stuff. Okay. But uh, as far as submitting the forms and reviewing them, oh okay. yes, yeah. that's okay. fairly manual. Okay. The, you know, there's all the mylars and stuff. You know. Yep. And that's the type of thing that we would hope that we could work towards as we have as we have more hours, uh, more experience here, and Karen is moving towards that. Um, in fact, we had allocated some money for some software. I think it was a PDF software or something that converted something into PDFs or something. Well, you could talk with her about that because she was like, that would be the one thing I'd like to start with there. Um, so. Yes, a little, a little bump up of Adobe software is good to be able to yeah. work with PDFs. Yeah. Um, Kelly, here you go. Well, I, I just noticed in, uh, I think it was Dave's correspondence or in their discussion about maybe having some time uh, that Kara would spend with Karen and that maybe, you know, yeah. so I didn't know if we should get that on the table too because it seemed like a good idea uh, if, we can, if we have, you know, have the funds in the budget to be able to. Yeah, and, and she Karen, was, Karen and, has the time and bring her back. And she is work. willing yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. She said she would. So, she, um, you know, I think, you know, what we'd like to do is get you started as soon as possible, um, and get Karen in here that first day with you, so that just you know, the just sit down. All right, this is that could save yeah. you, you know, half a day right there by having her to, to show you what's going on. Uh, there's several. Uh, things going on right now. I know Dave, who's uh, here on the Planning Commission. Dave, you're working on a few permits, is that correct? Well, the chair and I are just trying to make sure we're up to date on where things stand on everything and, and don't want to get anything to get hung up. Uh, and I think we're we're up to speed on that pretty well, although I saw Ray there in the background, and I think we're waiting to hear something from him. <laughs> Not as you arrive. I sent him an email the other day. I haven't heard back. But anyway, don't bother. <laughs> All right. So I guess so. There are some number of things that are um, in the works on um, uh, oh, right. file. So, um, John, what do you got? Anything else? No. Carol, what do you have questions for us? Um, I guess what would be the what would be the number of hours you would hope that I would? Minimum to start would be 10. Okay. Um, I think you, you're going to need to do that many to be able to do, be the, able job. To do the job. Right. 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 And 
you know, if you were up at 15 or 16 for the first couple of weeks just getting into things, I could see that certainly being very plausible and, you know, hopefully averaging, you know, 12 to 13 hours for the rest of the year. Okay. And then, uh, you know, we can talk as we're doing budget stuff, we can talk, decide, you know, you'll have a little feel of it here in the next month or so. And then we can say, all right, what's your taste for it? And what do you, you know, what do you think you could do with this in the next year? What do we have for money to do it? Um, and, you know, what's the payoff for, for having that done? So okay. uh, I think it worked very well. Um, right up the tip of my tongue, I don't have, what were we paying on this? Do you have that right in front of us? John, I think, has it. Like that over the next yeah. few weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you look right in the face Yeah, but I'm not facing. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we budgeted uh, twenty three thousand eight hundred. Last year. Oh, I think that it came out to it was, uh, you yeah, have the hours are done? No, I don't, but I, I thought we had based it on an average of 10 a week. Right. Mm -hmm. well, what? But, uh, About 10, 10 hours a week. week. Concerns you have? So that's not being able to get you what the rate is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I, you know, I'm sure I'll have questions as I get into things. It will be helpful to have Karen at least for a few hours to just show me yeah. around. I John, I have it actually. I don't want to. So we. Um, Start with Karen, and I'll do the same with you at, at thirty-two fifty. Uh, that's fair. Um, and at the board, we need to vote on that. But um, after formal recommendation from the uh, the planning commission, our job is really just to make sure you don't come in here with two heads on your shoulders here, um, which you do not. Um, so I'd make a motion to the board um, to go ahead and hire Carol Chamberlain for our zoning administrator position. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 So, um, if you want to stop in this week or call and speak to either Sasha or uh, Cheryl Lynn, to get this stuff. I guess she had that all ready for you. Yeah. So I'll return all this <laughs> when I stop in. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, in the meantime, I'll give Karen a call in the morning to find out what her schedule what is. Her schedule. And then I'll reach out to you okay. and uh, I'm trying to figure out when we can get you guys together or I'll put you guys up and you guys can figure your schedules out. Okay. All right? Yep. And Carol, I am the liaison to the select board for the zoning administration. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you want to communicate with me at all regarding anything, I always with Tom's the point man, but uh, if you have any issues and you want to okay. discuss it, or if you want to be there when you meet with Carolyn or anything like that, I met with Karen before she left, so I'm kind of up to speed on the process um, and okay. everything that's pending. So okay. if I can help in any way, please let me know. Sounds good. Thanks, Rob. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Good work. Good Thanks see you all. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So uh, I'm actually right on time. We have uh, open culvert RFPs. Um, Ray, excuse me, you're going to give us an update. Yeah. So. Uh, Part of the people work, we have we have some work that needs engineering done. Uh, basically, uh, three culverts, uh, one on or two on uh, Ward Brook and one on Jonesboro, and we also have the uh, slope failure on Lovers Lane that requires engineering as well. So, uh, 
to start the process, we had to sit down on RFP to find out any engineers that are interested in the job, doing the work. We, it's not, we're not issuing the contract at this time, but at least this is like a pre-qualification, what you're looking at tonight. And um, from this point, and I think there's only two, uh, Otter Creek and Du Bois and King. Yeah. Du Bois and King. We'll probably invite them both to a pre-bid meeting to look at the actual project and then uh, get some pricing, uh, better pricing at this, at that time. So um, that's a, that's it for the that RP. I just wanted the select board to to make sure they open them. Um, okay. um, as I said, there's just, there may be some rates in there, but it's not uh, an official contract. Um, and so from this, then you will invite them to a uh, uh, free uh, free bid meeting, we might say, and uh, I'll let the select board know. Probably will have should have a select board member uh, at the meeting. All right. Uh, so this is just the colors, not lovers. No, this is for all. There's yeah. The three colors. Three colors and lovers. Oh, and lovers. Okay. Because yeah. okay. we need we need good engineering on. For everyone. Yeah. Well, yes. So that's where we stand on that. Thanks. Yes. So this more is more likely, you know, be uh, whatever happens. It's you know we're not going to get any design work back probably till sometime this winter. You know, be next year's work at some point. And you think Lovers Lane now is going to be? Well, what we had, and I don't know if this is Martin. You know, Step on. Uh, we're going to put a temporary guardrail up um, right now, or before winter, <laughs> whatever that might be. And it's going to be one lane uh, through there. Uh, with the we didn't want to put Jersey barriers because of the weight. Weight on, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're putting guardrail up, and uh, I guess they're going to plan on plowing it with the with the smaller truck, the Dodge truck. All right, step on. That'll be your job, huh? Yeah, I'm very excited about it. It'll be nice and narrow for me. I mean, if there's a chance that uh, we get a design back and possibly that work could be done in the winter time, uh, depending on what the what the fix is. But I, I suspect it's going to be removing quite a bit of that material out, finding where the rock is, and build it back up again. Yep. So this is based off FEMA's site, is it? What's that? This is based off FEMA's site, is it? Uh, I'm sorry. The Their site, is it? Yeah. From FEMA? FEMA's looked at it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, FEMA looked at it. So these are off that? Yeah. So, um, and continuing on with the FEMA stuff, right? So the 23rd is the deadline for your FEMA damage inventory. Uh, so I kind of completed that today. Quite a list, uh, uh, it's like six pages long, but it's all GPS uh, coordinates of all the work, all the culverts, everything. Um, so the without the major repair, it's it's going to be like three hundred to four hundred thousand dollars of repair work we've done. Uh, but and yet, if you add in these other culverts. And slide, it's well, it's like 1.6 million. So it's quite a bit of work involved here. Yeah. So I'm hoping that the, at least get started on this inventory submittal, and uh, we should be able to get some reimbursement fairly soon. I'm going through the invoices and get them charged out to the, the right locations. Yeah. They're only invoicing for Cat B right now, they're only paying out for Cat B. So your emergency protective measures, they're not paying out for anything else? Yeah. yeah. But we've had some, like the repair of your culvert, that was an emergency repair. Yeah. So, so we could like reimburse for that. Yeah. And That's the culvert, I mean. the big culvert up on Ward Brook, that was an emergency repair. repair. So you know, we got quite a bit of money tied up. Yeah. Those, those. yeah. yeah. So, oh, um, yeah. That's, that's where we stand on the FEMA work. Nice. So from these, um, there are some rates in there, but again, just general rates. General rates, yeah, and it's really talking about their qualifications. So, yeah, both these uh, engineers have done work with the town, 
and are still doing work for the town, so I'm pretty confident in them, but you know, we have to follow the process. Yep. And we had invite we invited, I believe, half a dozen engineers, and this is what we have, two bids, so uh, but uh do not we just take those proposals. Uh, for these there. Sasha, she can make coffees for you if yep. you want to look at them. Yep. Um, but go ahead and then let us know when that meeting is going to be, and between the five of us, one of us should be able to get there. Actually, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, we got some folks yeah. ready. You can have. Yeah. Right, one question in the installing a guardrail on this land is that will that have any impact driving those? You know, driving the post down into that soil. Yeah, as far as but installing a guardrail there. Well, they'll, they'll, they'll use longer the, post. You know, uh, but yeah. The, the, the I don't think the, the soils will that have any impact. I don't believe so. I mean, uh, FR Lafayette, we'll be doing our Lafayette specialties. Yeah. We'll be doing work and they're pretty. And if there is an issue out there, they'll stop. All right, well, thank so, you. Uh, I did want to update you on this project, the stormwater okay. project. So we're, as you can see, visibly we're near completion, but we do have an issue out here in that uh, the contractor uh, did make a, had a bust in his grades, and he has looked up to it. The, the pipe going across the parking lot is a foot high, and it gets near the school, it's going the wrong direction. So uh, if you notice out there, you have one catch piece and it's really high. Yeah. And he kept on saying his grades were right and that the engineer was wrong. Well, it turns out that he had made a mistake. Um, so the plan right now, if the weather cooperates, is school is uh, on vacation, uh, vac uh, Thanksgiving week. Yep. We're gonna, he's going to dig it up and relay the pipe and get it to the right grade. You know, if the weather doesn't allow us to do that, we're going to lower that catch basin and put a steel plate on it uh, for the winter, if nothing else. Right. So, but he is, you know, he's all known to it. I mean, we, uh, both myself and engineer, were, uh, you know, he has to shoot the grades, but we, we were after him several times, double checking and everything. And he, he was pretty sure that he was right all the time. But, didn't turn out that way, but uh, in his, on his behalf, he has, he has owned up to it as well. Okay. Uh, and there's been some issues over around the school school as well that uh, he's owned up to. Uh, he's had to go back and work on. So, I mean, it looks it looks pretty good out here. I mean, yeah, the pond yeah. and everything came out well. Uh, and it doesn't look like he damaged anything on Howland's land. I mean, when we were walking there, there was those bushes and stuff. Yes. And amazing. Take that out. Yeah, it, it did uh, work out well. Very little disturbance other than the lawn. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his driveway, they're going to re redo his driveway because they tore that out. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Uh, I think Howard's satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it's unfortunate, but I don't know what else we could have done. Uh, you know, we're, the contractor has got to get the right grades. You know? Yeah, no, if you've given him the the uh, charts to work off, you yeah. know, and he, he makes the mistake. It's too bad. But, yeah. Um, it's oh well. Been well, in that position on the other side before. Yeah, I think everyone. It's one of those he probably won't make again. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's a fairly young crew, right? They are very oh, young yeah, crew. They really are. Uh, <clears throat> but um, <laughs> I think they've done a nice job, and as long as he uh, takes care of what. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, those two jobs. Well, thanks, Ray. Um, so you have the RFPs. You can go ahead and, and yeah, and get those, on. get that going. Continue pushing with, um, you know, the FEMA stuff. I mean, the FEMA is a tremendous amount of paperwork. Yeah, tremendous. And uh, but the, you know, I think I got a handle on it. Just being sure of it myself. FEMA has been really uh, cooperative working with them. Uh, Jerry Fish with FEMA. All right, Andy. Very nice guy. Then um, I'll call you in the morning and we can set the time. Now I'm thinking about it. Maybe we can do it early morning this week. 
and then up to uh, um, yeah, uh, college. I, think, I, I don't know. I, I think the road is better now than it was, but I'm glad to take If there's something I missed, walked and driving through, but honestly, I thought it was in pretty good shape. All right, we'll go out. We'll take a look. Maybe get some pictures so we can uh, take a judge it from there. All right, anything for Ray? Nothing else? All right. Let's make sure we don't have any other one here looking to get in. We don't. And now we have the rec, um, rec committee. Is that right? It's like an agenda of my rights. Yeah. Right yep. Yeah. I'm Chris Stevenson, chair of the rec committee. Um, well, I don't want to exclude anyone. I think Susan might be here to support me. I'm here, too. I'm sure Stephen is as well. Yeah. Never really know. Move on in there, Crystal. Um, okay. See you. Did everyone, oh, sorry. Susan, why don't you, I know you're part of the committee. Why don't you one up and Let's get that out of there. Let's choose one or the other. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I submitted our draft budget and got asked to come in here and share it with you. Um, we can, I can walk you through it or you can ask questions. It's, um, Why don't you go ahead and walk us through it first while you're right. Okay. Um, yeah, just for uh, reference, last year's <coughs> budget ask was because um, we share costs with the school on certain line items. Um, just for reference, last year was just under 7000 but the Moortown... Um, component of it is just uh, you know four thousand nine hundred and thirty two dollars and fifty cents so we're still spending against that and I didn't really prepare a, a formal update on that but we're gonna be within our budget this year is where we're headed um, and the ask for next year um, is shared cost of fifty two hundred um, and the town component or a total cost of fifty two hundred and the town shared component is four thousand and fifty so it's coming down uh, a little bit. Um, as far as what we had in there, um, probably one of the most exciting topics is portalettes, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, and uh, we actually just finished uh, an installation with the eco classrooms to put in a new type of portalette uh, up in their kindergarten pre K classroom by a company called Wasted. Yeah, so that, I want to know a little bit about that because um, I have a few concerns, but tell me about them. Uh, they have a really great um, YouTube video that there's no way I could be as funny as. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, essentially, uh, there's a lot of young energy and redesigning um, the perception of portalettes um, and ensuring that they're clean um, and have toilet paper, which based on our experience this year, would be a big improvement from our current vendor. Um, but I think what makes them special, and I can't do it full justice, is they trap, um, they, they actually call it a, um, oh my lord, what's the name? Deposit station? Or a donation station. Um, and they're going to separate out the urea, essentially, and use it in agriculture. Um, Peace cycling, yes. The libraries are actually hosting a peace cycling. Uh, I think it's in Waitsfield or Warren uh, this Thursday. But there's more uh, to know than I could share with you. But that's like the gist of it. So um, this unit was pretty cool because it fit in the back of my truck, and then it like popped open like a piece of origami. Um, and so it's just kind of cool. They, they evidently have a lot of different styles, including permanent installations at um, their Oregon, they have an Oregon office, so at some like heavily used recreation areas. So they can do a permanent installation in the future. We've talked about being out of the eco classrooms, but I don't think anybody is 100% decided on where that would want to be, you know, where that would need to be. Right. How you pay for it is really necessary. All so this is just a temporary... Yeah, this is just a plastic pop-up portalette that they're going to come and clean. All right. I think by... They, it said weekly, but they, I think everyone agreed bi-weekly is going to be just fine. These kids are three feet tall and out there only right. a day of weeks. <laughs> so is that for everyone to use, or is it just the kids, or how's that? That work? unit is just for the eco-classroom. It goes on there. It's not in here. Um, but the reason I bring it up is because we have had issues with our current vendor 
Um, and they don't have any greater purpose story. So I think it was inspiring to move, if the budget didn't change, to move to a vendor that was trying to do something inspiring. Um, and uh, further, I mean, how many times have, I get a few emails from Susan that her extra volunteer work, making sure it's clean and there's toilet paper. <laughs> it was not yeah. a really fun Susan. job. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> We don't have any pictures or anything to share, but oh, it's true. Some, I have pictures. I have pictures. So. <laughs> I think the only thing I had in there, you know, we start moving forward on more of those or, or thinking of permanent types. Um, mm. We just need to make sure there's covenants and there's wells and, and things that we need to make sure that we're, we're paying attention to and, and what's going on up there. Yeah. Before we. Right, to fill a hole in the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody has a timeline for that. I mean, we've been talking about this eco solution for a few years, and it, it came in pretty hot and fast from Lulu this summer. I missed an email and was suddenly behind on my heels, but um, it's up there now. Uh, I did interview a couple of the kindergartners at the um, community town event on Saturday night, and they hadn't used it yet. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe they will just you know, follow up with a yeah. So, all right. So, uh, thank you, Chris, for that update on, on yeah. the four hillets. Uh, we have the fourteen hundred there. The next item down, you had port maintenance for thirteen hundred. Yeah. So this is um, actually a lot of these invoices have come in this year. Um, which, what we do in the court maintenance line is put a few hundred dollars usually for crack fill or any sort of like putty or paint. Um, and what we did uh, this year is there was ambition to get uh, the courts repainted so that instead of there being capability for only two pickleball games at once, two tennis games at once, or one of each, now we can have two pickleball and tennis or four pickleball or two tennis. So it's just like, and you see the buzz out there. People, I don't have a head count, but it's highly used now. I, I've used it myself this summer um, yeah. several times with my daughter and getting in as well, playing pickleball and it's, and there's always people there and yeah, I think it's a good thing and you guys are doing a good job with it. Thank you. It's been nice to have, have the basketball players have a space and we can shift if we're using courts that would make it more amenable for tennis sure. people to have their side. Yeah. So it's been real flexible and nice. And we've doubled our capacity for pickleball, which has been highly in demand. So it's good. Yeah. Now, how many years ago, Susan, was it that you came with that <laughs> idea of pickleball? 2017. <laughs> was it? Really? I think so. I uh, with the, just to put the tape like down. The, yeah. I and mean, then, you were like on the, the forefront the of this whole pickleball thing. You know this history. <laughs> she, yeah. It was... <laughs> and I, to myself, I'm like, pickleball, you know, that's the old people. Or, you know, I didn't, I didn't hear, now it's, well, now I'm old, I guess, so I can, I'm, I'm aged in. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, they're in leagues now. Uh, I mean, national, you know, like professional leagues. It's uh, even on ESPN at times. So I, you know, I expect sometimes maybe you see a meme in there. At New York, or no, we're about playing and having fun. Good. For playing. <laughs> the emphasis is playing. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad it's. Um, taken off, and you really are only the person this town to thank for it because you, oh, well, you. you started a good job. Yeah, it's been nice taking credit for Susan's work on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to have to slash your budget on that. <laughs> All right, that's fine. It's your bit to do. Um, so, um, what we did is we are incurring some receipts from this year and we put them in the next year's budget. I was going to, once I get them, ask if you want to take it out of this year's budget against a different line item. I don't know the exact. Yeah, let us that. know and then when we get, depending on, I got a big expense to talk about tonight, so I don't think there's going to be any kind of. These are smaller expenses, yeah, yes. Leftover stuff, so. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing will be left over. Any problems going to be taken. Um, Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah, so then this in it would have the money that was spent to paint it, um, tape it, paint it, um, and we bought two four, nuts. four pickleball nets off of Amazon, I believe, um, and they're on, they roll around, so they go, they're in your way or they're out of your way, they're very flexible. Um, and they're nice, actually, again, I've used them, and they're very sturdy, they're aluminum. Mm -hmm. um, so they're light, they can be moved, and 
seemed like everyone was welcome to use them. So, so we're hoping to get um, the the donor of the those uh, props essentially. We're going to reimburse them in next year's budget. That's what's in the thirteen hundred. Um, I think a thousand dollars of that, roughly eleven hundred dollars of that, is the nets and the paint and the tape. All right. Um, what else? Uh, playground renovation. It's on the radar. There's no money in there. Um, we've had a couple meetings with um, uh, Kate, and we're trying to like build a plan, essentially with the school. She's coming into her new role, um, and she already has a playground ambition. So I won't fill your ear on that unless you want a bunch of half answers <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> But uh, we wanted to make it visible to people in the town, so we put that in there. The fence, we don't expect to have any issues. We did a pretty major fence repair this year, about $870. I didn't look at it today on my way in here, but I think it's still in great shape. It was in great shape for Morefest. Um, so that's just incidentals is what's in that line item. It should, we need to get a repair done that would allow us to cover what we would call as maintenance fees. Um, we didn't uh, act on it. Should I move on? Yeah, go ahead. The kiosk, but um, the grant money is still there. Um, the project got held up. Um, so what that means is that we will refresh the map on the trailhead signboard right near the story walk entrance. We have a chance to refresh it. Um, so that's still grant money that we're planning on spending next year. The town's not actually paying. It's, it came out of some community level funding. Um, mm -hmm. free, okay, you have, and then uh, trail improvements, a thousand, right. yeah. That's a matching grant, yeah. I mean, I can give you a lot of updates on the, the riders, um, if you want them, but they essentially, the gist of it would be they, uh, they hired a field maintenance crew, um, and they do a lot, they've done a lot of repair work around the valley, and it's been pretty awesome, you know, having someone on staff, kind of like having your own town highway department, they're able to go and fix things um, and make a lot of improvements to some beat down trails. So I think the goal next year would be to, um, I think we put in to get them here for two weeks um, and that they would come and help with some of the reroutes around the eco classrooms. That's a little bit dependent on the town forest management plan finishing out and a few volunteers figuring out how to reroute it. <laughs> but they would then come in and help do the work um, and I'm not sure that the grant money would be needed for that, but you know, if we were at, if we had a big mutual ask, this would allow us to catalyze funding from other sources, including the riders. Before we move on to the education and improvements, thanks for putting in the, the line item as far as uh, playground renovation. Um, would you add uh, fields into that as well, or does that include the fields? Because when I one of the things spending more time around here uh, lack of a really good playground in the fields which we have nice fields but they're all in pretty poor shape um, you know that be a different line item that we should add in there and, and so that there's some visibility and, and there's because I think that something needs to be looked at um, I think it would be a separate line item but it's definitely a, a, something that we've been talking about um, and we could have put in here as a placeholder one of the things that we've tried to do is find out, Lisa Loomis even interviewed me in the spring and I haven't seen it come out in the Valley Report, but she was trying to do an, um, or an article on who's using all the rec fields around the greater valley, so not just right. the rec district, but Mad River or um, Moortown and Duxbury, um, and, and whether or not we have enough fields and courts and basketball and you know, all that type of stuff. Um, so I think my next step is to follow up and see if that article went anywhere and what she learned. We met with the nonprofit that manages Couples Field to see if they knew of any youth groups that wanted to play here. One of the problems that I guess I'm dodging around is nobody's really playing on the baseball diamond, right. except for a little bit of soccer. And their only complaint was to take a rock out, which might have come out, I don't know. I um, ran it over. And then yeah. I found it and took it out. Okay, that's, that's gone. So trying to figure out that balance of like improving the fields for who and like what will come, right? Exactly. Um, they're not using it because they're in rough shape, but if they're fixed, will they come or is it? Right, cart horse. Yeah. Um, but 
And I think if we have a line item, sometimes there's grants available and those type of things if it's you show that there's something there or you're working on something. Um, yes. Easier. Great. I will. It's now on my version. Um, I'll populate that more. Um, and on that note, some of the back fields, because we have a lot of field, we've had wet field and dry field. We have a couple types of field. Um, because of the success that Susan has brought to town, you know, there could be a justification for more parking back there as well at some point. So that's the other thing we've loosely talked about is how would we, you know, what, what do we really need in three to five years right. to grow with the capacity of use that we've seen. So. Good. And then you have um, Bear Initiative on the edge. Education. Yep, so we supported that in last year's budget. Um, it's a five town coordination um, with a couple other nonprofits, including Friends of Mad River, um, Stark Mountain Foundation, Sugarbush. Providing education, I think one of the biggest things that we did last year, um, if you're looking for flavor on that, was host a, a bear contest and try and elicit entries. We got poetry, we got kids' drawings, some stories, um, and we had a couple of entries from more town and actually the prize which is sort of randomly selected from anyone that puts something worth it into the hat was a bear proof trash toter and so one of our <laughs> residents won that this year yeah we gave two away so that was really exciting to deliver that local um, and so the ask is to support that again and everybody on the committee was pretty excited about that the, the bear population is at the highest level in like five or ten years so a lot of people are seeing bears. And we've been at the farmer's market, we've been up at the ski events, we're trying to hit the second homeowners, which yeah. sort of also need that education. Yeah. I just had one on my lawn last this past weekend, and he was eating apples. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was actually very cool. He would take, pull them off, and then he'd get on his stomach. And like eat like this, and then stand back up. I got it on film. I'll show you. Oh, and then you should enter in the contest. Well, I saw just thinking when I saw that. Yeah, and it, he did it for three or four times. And then he caught my scent, and he was just gone. Oh, gone. It's well, that's a good sign, yeah. right? Yeah. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I don't know, what do you have? So but, fast. Uh, yeah, we lived in Faced, and they would have just they wouldn't move. They just that neighborhood it just like, they just they would stand right now. Their ground. I mean, eventually, if you charged them, they would move, but that's right. intimidating. That's if you want to be the average person. <laughs> um, so there are lots of bear rounds. Yeah. Um, that looks like it finishes you up. Um, yeah, and we're going to work with Eco Classroom and support their Winter Fest, which I thought for them was a huge success. And it's, I think, an opportunity for us to you know, build on. Sure. All right. Well, um, any questions for Chris or? Did you say you have, you have some funds left over from this year that will be put into the next year, or once you go through yes, all your um, Well, it, we didn't do the trail, the grant, the $1,000 trail program phase two grant match we had in last year's budget, mm -hmm. and it's not going to get spent this year. So it's one thing I meant. And then the other was the pickleball um, props, essentially, the paint, the tape, those around $1,100. And, I don't have the invoices yet, but this address is paying it in March once, you know. So oh, I see. It goes. Okay. It's yeah. yeah. All right. Um, yeah, we already have that. Pay for it now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the right way to do it in the long term, but I think it was pretty generous. We're getting a lot of use, and yeah. it's a fair investment, I think, for us. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Uh, so Chris and I worked together a little bit. Um, there was talk of getting a brush on for the, the side sled hill, and they also talked about the bee garden getting brush on down every year. And Chris and I talked and he put in some money in the budget this year for a brush on, but he left it kind of up to me to figure out what would fit on our on our Kubota that we have at the shop. Um, and I did get a, a couple quotes. We've been busy, so I haven't had the time to, to bring them to him, but it's looking like uh, $2,300, 2235 and that was from Champlain Valley Equipment, and that was the low of the two bids that I got, and the other one was 2600 And we budgeted 2600 I believe. Maybe. So, yeah. All right, we'll, um, 
We don't have any answers on this now, but um, yeah, I just I wanted to make sure it was still brought up and tried. Yep. To, um, Chris, any questions for us? No, I don't think so. No. Can I bring up another topic? Sure. Halloween, because last year the trucks at the both ends of town made a huge difference in the speed of the traffic. It made it much safer. So I was hoping that could happen again this year. I had planned on if the board's okay with the town truck sitting at sure. either side of town. That'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank good. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we're moving right along and a little bit late. Hey, good, Michelle. Oh, not too bad. Doug is not here, is he? <laughs> did you hear from him? No? And did you confirm with him that he was coming? We'll wait a couple minutes, take a break. Anyone else hear from Doug at all? No? Thank you, Susan. Have a good night. Colin, have a good night. Should we do more fast first and then when Doug comes, we'll go? Do they, is anyone else coming, Michelle, or is it just you? Or? Um, People, why don't we go ahead, uh, Sasha? Um, start with uh, some reports, communications from you, please. Um, Sheryl, I wanted to make sure that everybody got their budget status before she emailed on Friday. Did everyone get that? The budget status report? Mm -hmm. We haven't really had a chance to look at it yet. Yeah, so we'll, um, towards the end of the meeting, when we get into old business, I'll highlight a couple things that we need to take a look at. Um, in my stack of stuff I have for you guys, I have one error in the mission. Um, letter first, first stepped in, and then it was a uh, celebration of power, so I have to be from Sherman. We should talk to you about it. I think it's for next year's audit team. I'll take a look at it here, I can recall. And we got a estimate for when we had Pete come to our PMs for the buildings, they found that our water pressure valve here is going to be replaced at some seven hundred and fifty dollars and it's going to get up on that. And that has to be done soon. Okay. He didn't say like this year, but he said it's coming, so just to give us okay. a warning on it. Make sure when we're doing budget work. Putting that in for early next year. Water pressure valve? Yeah. I've got a curb cut in the pile. I've got the permit from Washington Electric Co op that I emailed to everybody right after the last meeting for road work. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I left everybody their annual health care declarations to fill out. Um, and once that is filled out, then you will. People will get their annual check, is that it? Yep. And Robin needs to do his W-2. Um, I've got loan documents from Sherilyn as well for the grader. Have we heard? Um, I don't know on that. Any update? Stefan, have you heard any updates on the, the grader? The last we heard, it was uh, on the water. Still. And that was, that was two weeks ago we heard from him. So, he said four to six weeks, but that was That's two fine. weeks ago, and who knows what'll what'll happen when it hits customs or or if it's actually on a boat. Nobody really knows. Nobody knows. And it's coming into Maryland or New Jersey. Uh, he didn't. I don't remember if it was ever mentioned where it was coming into, what port it was coming into. But it can take up to sixty days to travel from there, according to the Google. Mm -hmm. 
Jeez, all right. Well, at least we're we have hoping. some uh, we're yeah. docs some to look light. at. What else? Uh, Mike Stroni sent an email. He would like to be appointed to the rec committee. Is that something that you know anything about? Yeah, I haven't met him yet, but um, Susan knows him well, and I, he has a lot of experience, I think, in recreation. So um, yes, he does. Yeah, and um, yeah, and succession planning is a, a topic of focus for all of us. So I'm hoping that he'll come in and want to take some responsibilities. So all right. So I'd uh, move to accept the uh, what was the name? Mike Stroni. Mike Stroni. Mike Stroni. John. Second. All in favor. All right. Thank you. Be good to get him in sometime. If they just come in and introduce himself to us. It sounds like most people know him. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looks known on the internet, but I have not met him. <laughs> All right. And the last thing I have is one of the benches out on the porch, um, the historical societies, I guess. Dr. Butch would like to have one of them put over at the Historical Society building since it's the long time. Yep. So I just want to let you guys know one of them's going to come up missing and it'll be over it'll there. It'll be over there. Yep. Cool. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Just more of your crew. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, Kelly, you got anything for us? Um, I think given all the situations that have come up with class four roads in the last couple of years, we may want to think about looking at that policy and what that policy really looks like and making it a little bit more clear because there have been a lot of issues. It seems like with things just coming up and what the town is going to do and what the town is not going to do. Yeah, and it has been. We were going to look at that every year. But it's been. All right, so probably three, that's probably one of the agenda items. Rather than that, trails has yeah. the same kind of pressure on it. Yeah, and I think, and I don't know if it's just property changing hands and the attorney is not sharing information or not understanding it or what it is. But it just seems like there's a lot more development going in there, and I think we need to be really clear about, as a town, what we're going to do, what we're not going to do, and stick to it. Right, no, I think, and that's where that document came in, is when we got it, when I got it, there was really nilly. We tried to get it, and as you said, things have kind of deteriorated a little bit. And uh, we also, I think we need to, as, as Don says, maybe even, or maybe you didn't say it, but we talked about getting the, the planning commission and or the DRB involved as well, so that when people are getting permits, um, they're well aware of, all right, you're getting a permit here for a class square road or a house, but you're going to be uh, responsible for all charges and costs. And the timing is good for the planning commission since they're starting, or have been working on the town plan. So I don't know size. <laughs> All right, so we'll uh, work that into our next, probably our next discussion we can bring it out. I don't think a lot of people know how that we can start soliciting um, advice on what we should do with it. Yeah. Robert, what about you? What do you got? Uh, I got nothing. All right. Um, the new zoning person, that's great. Yeah. Don, I'd go to you, but I know you'll take forever, so. Uh, John? <laughs> I... I don't have anything. <clears throat> so one thing you were um, wondering about was the, the um, uh, cutting. Cutting, out. yes. Yeah. So yeah. talk to Martin. One of us needs to go there and, and um, kind of show him where. Okay. So I told him either you or I would do it, and so it'll probably have to be you at this point. Okay. Um, but it depends on how things are going. But I may wreck a day and just go ahead and do that. But he's aware that he's done. He's willing to get it done this fall. Um, okay. So it can be done. Okay. All right, so Michelle, you guys get your whole crew, or is it still your waiting? Is Leanne coming, you said? She, she is, but we can get started here. Yeah, we're. I think. Okay, why don't you come up? You guys are ready. Thank you, Eric.
Two weeks, uh, either side. <laughs> yeah, we were like this close to just calling it. <laughs> one of these days, it's going to be bad weather, but it's been, I think we had one rainy Morfest. Yeah, one pretty pretty rainy Morfest. I think that was relatively well attended and yeah. the fundraisers did relatively well. So, you know, I think from, from that perspective, people still want to get together, even if it's mm -hmm. under a tent in the rain. <laughs> Um, you know, that year Dwayne and I were watching the radar, you know, as storms were coming in and bands, so. So how, how long has Morefest been going on? So 2016 was yeah, the first Morefest, and that is when we dedicated the town, the new town office. Right. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it was a, a morphing of an event from the Energy Committee. Was that, yeah, was we just... renamed it, we rebranded it. Uh, it was in the springtime, not the fall. So it's evolved since 2016, but really the organization of it and you know the heart of it, which is a community event, a chance for people to get together, really hasn't changed since then. No. So that's why the committee thought like, so it's been what, six times, I think, because we skipped one during COVID. It, it was time to you know, write out some policies, it, like, it's been organized consistently, but you know, better to get that stuff down. Um, you know what the, the theme of it is, how how it runs. There's bylaws that govern the makeup of the committee, and then the last part of what we sent you was just a recap of this year, just a you know one page, two page brief. Who was there? You know, and the genesis of the bylaws and the structure really came this year out of more people wanting to have tents and be member and um, come and be vendors and be part of Morefest. So we really wanted some developed structure around that so that we could have something to both guide the committee and then we could show people that wanted to attend what the structure was as opposed to just saying, no, the Random. committee has decided yeah. um, so that there was some structure there. Um, so that was the real genesis be behind you know, first was the procedures um, on who could really vend and who we intended to have vend because of the historical significance of the event and where we wanted the mission of the event to be, and then just you know the number of people that were that were wanting to you know really be there and apply and and the intention of what they wanted to do at Northwest. And we had to say no, you know, to a couple people for the first time for space issues, you know, and I think as the event. It's, you know, we have hundreds of people go. So, um, you know, people expect more fest. I think more people want to be a part of it, so. And we had people right up to a couple days before more fest, all of a sudden reaching out that we hadn't heard from saying, hey, can we come? Hey, we want to do this. Hey, we want to do that. Well, so we got to set up a time frame and, and mm -hmm. all of that as well. In this first mm -hmm. That's the, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the cost of success. It's a great problem. It's <laughs> a good problem to have. Is there a copy of that? Here. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Um, you know, Leah, why don't you pull your chair up for the rest of your uh, more No, come on up. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it wouldn't be right without a full. Uh, yeah, with a number of them. It is in my case. Yeah, so your success has drawn, uh, created. Uh, potential problems, but, um, you know, as far as you said, who can, who can't get here or, or, or participate. Um, I have not had an opportunity um, to go through this. I, you know, I got it this morning or last night, this morning, and, um, but just, I mean, looking at it, I, I think we were certainly due for, for some more um, organizational work, just guidelines. Um, and I think, I mean, I haven't looked at them, but I mean, you were here on this board, and you, 
uh, I mean, I think we have in town a general, all right, here's committees, here's how they run. Um, as you saw tonight, Steve had, I mean, Chris had a new person for the, the right committee. We're not here to micromanage and say, no, this person can, or it's not that person. It's kind of, all right, you folks, four or five, have, you know, started this and worked on it. It's, uh, you know, I, I will read this and we'll come back with probably some changes or, or maybe not. I just really have not read it. Um, but it'll be up to you guys to, to kind of enforce it and, and do it. Um, you know, we're not here to pick chair people or um, member, you know, this is how in town it works. I want it to be consistent with, with what we all do. Um, and then as far as the, the, uh, the policies, you know, we'll, we'll all look at all the policies, you know, uh, you know, Again, I haven't looked at them. Who, who you, you know, who's a benefit or, or who can be a vendor here? You know, we'll, we'll certainly look at that stuff and come up with a consistent um, recommendation for you, and certainly probably take what you've got. I mean, again, we're not. It's, it's. And I appreciate you guys are are doing this. Um, so, you know, thank you for taking the time. And I know with Leanne and, and all three of your four of you. I've been working on it for you know a couple of weeks, two or three weeks since Northwest got done. Uh, there's been a lot of texts and emails and <laughs> phone calls and, and such, and uh, so I, I'm sure it's a good piece of work. But uh, you know, I, and I look forward to, to going through it and providing some feedback. I think when you read it, you'll you'll it will feel very much like Morfest the event. You know, there's. There's nothing in there that we're really not already doing or, you know, the intent of doing. It's, it's you know, nothing groundbreaking, right? It's really in practice. We're just writing down what's done in practice. Exactly. That way, you know, eventually the four of us won't be here. And, uh, you know, you'll have new people and it'll still run the same way. The heart of Morefest will not change. You know, it'll still right. be a community of us. And I think that's important. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it'll also help the folks that, you know, the community tents that want to be a part of Morefest and then any um, vendors that potentially want to be a part of Morefest to help guide them as well if they want to apply to be, you know, a so-called quote-unquote vendor um, or community tent so they understand the heart of Morefest. Because I think, you know, we had vendors say, well, we want to come sell things at Morefest. And so that's what was, you know, time consuming to explain. It's not really a vending event, right? It's a community event. And so I think with a document like this, you know, it's almost the beginning of it, it's almost like a marketing piece to explain why we do more fest as well. Um, to help guide that conversation too, when we do have to explain to vendors that um, it's not really what this is about. Right, yeah, I think um, the start of this was really, it was a celebration and you know, we want to keep that in mind. And, and we don't want to be, you know, every time someone turns around, just, you know, looking for a, a dollar here or a dollar there, you know, so we can keep things down. Um, and we want the space to showcase our community tents. We want the space to showcase the rec committee and the member of riders and, you know, to showcase those things um, in the library and things like that. So. And I think if you look at the recap and you look and see, you know, what community organizations were present, you know, I think everybody on the chance in Moortown and surrounding areas who really wanted <clears throat> to present to the community they got a chance to be there. Questions, guys? I know, I looked this over earlier and um, it looks pretty solid. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you were gonna get a little bit over, I think it's a good job on a great start and <clears throat> as far as um yeah, budget-wise, what, what we'll do is we'll take a look at this, and then within a month or so, we'll get back to you. Uh, maybe have you all come back in and just um, go over it, and, and, uh, and then kind of um, make a motion, put it into our uh, uh, bylaws, and go from there. But uh, if we have any questions, we'll, we'll reach out to one of you or all of you, and uh, and if you guys are the same, if you have any employer questions or anything like that. Just certainly uh, let Sasha know and we can um, all get it. One, one thing that struck me as I went through and looked at activities, uh, that Baker's Battle, do away with that. <laughs> 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 Baker's Battle. No way, I'm a winner. 
So you shouldn't have to go there. So Chris, let us take a look for it. Okay. Um, and if we don't, then we will we'll get it. But yeah, I mean, we're looking for something uniform and, and great right. and for everybody. I'm trying to let you guys do what you do. You know, I mean, just as long as just someone can report back, and that's how we're looking for you. I mean, we want to delegate. Well, just how it carries on in the future one. No, it's good. People. Exactly. Yeah. No, I mean, there needs to be yeah. Yeah. For the some structure. Yeah. 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 We, want, we want structure as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 10 it's years from down the road, right. now you, who knows, right? We want you to be able to know what to expect from us, us to know what to expect from you. Well, as long as it's all written down, it all works. Mm -hmm. Yep, sounds good. All right, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And down the bottom. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And so the two parts to this are the personnel. And one of the parts we're wondering, and this is not a, uh, the number one here is not a budgetary number item, but uh, a, the idea of library and library director and assistant librarian and library services coordinator. So this year we'd like to change the titles of the library employees to reflect the scope of their duties and to keep pace with other libraries of our size within Vermont. So we'd like to change the title of librarian to be library director and to change the title of assistant librarian to library services coordinator. And the reason we were bringing this up now is we were thinking that when we look at the line items on the budget, it would say library director instead of librarian. So that's kind of the timing of this request is we're like, okay. well, if we're going to talk about this line by line, like when we meet, we refer to the position as library director. So it would just allow some consistency there. And I know I emailed about library services coordinator and people were like, well, who's that? So we figured we could clarify um, that that's the role that, the, that, uh, that Nicole is fulfilling. So that and then, you know, in job descriptions and, and other appropriate places, we weren't sure where else, you know, Sasha or Cheryl Lynn or the select board might come across it. So we've made those changes within our trustee board and it's reflected in our minutes and whatnot, but we just figured we would mention that as a way to be consistent across the board. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about that. So then number two is when we were looking at the library budget and when we specifically look at the personnel numbers, the library services coordinator with the role um, of the town hall. So for example, the projected budget for the 2024 library services coordinator, Nicole's salary, includes the extra two hours, $20 per hour, as she's hired as the town hall custodian duties. So then this is an increase to the projected salary, and we were just wondering if you wanted that to be present in the library's budget personnel line, or if that should be present in the town hall, because they have separate line items, I believe. So, and I don't have access to, the, to that. So that was just a question we had. So we included it here in case that's where you want it to be. What can you have one? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, for that. So, so if you're wondering where's where does that number come from? But if you prefer it be pulled out and the four thousand sixty nine for the year be within the town hall budget, you know, you know, as long as we, as long as you know, they can find it, you know, when it's time to pay the paycheck, you right. know. So whatever system works for you guys, for that. Um, and along those same lines, Corey, our library director, has increased duties of the town hall manager. And we are projecting um, in looking at this, in, when we say projecting the library director's salary, we mean within the 2023 year that there will be extra hours that she's been working as the town hall manager. So then when we are looking forward to the 2024 salary and calculation, currently it's 18 hours, but plus the two hours for the town hall manager duties. So that's where that, uh, the rationale behind that and then suggesting a $1 increase for the 2023 salary to 21 per hour. So when you see those numbers under the personnel, I just wanted to kind of explain where that was coming from. And that was all for the personnel. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and yeah. then Did under- you any questions? Oh yeah, any questions on that one? So then within the operating expenses, which is the remainder of the budget, um, for all of the line items in the operating expenses, we're asking for level funding for the 2024 budget. The budget of these items fits perfectly with the daily operating costs of the library. Um, with current funding, the library is able to provide access to current relevant resources and provide robust and engaging programming. So the items that we are looking to be changed would be those three, the building maintenance, equipment and then um, that's combined and then supplies and materials so under building maintenance this is um, we found in the 2023 uh, budget that the cleaning fee for the town hall was being taken from the library's building and maintenance line and that wasn't only 
the, the monthly cleaning of the space that included cleaning after rentals, which if that is coming from the library's budget, then that line item would need to be increased to cover that. Right. So kind of referring back to that $4,069 that we discussed with the library services coordinator salary when they were doing the town hall custodial work. Um, and then the other question is if the cleaning supplies are also coming out of library building maintenance, we would just need the funds to be able to support those purchases. Because currently in the library building maintenance, uh, 2023 budget doesn't have that built in. So it's that kind of, it's almost an echo to that same question is if that money is, if you would prefer it to be in the town hall budget, then that's where it will be or, or, or out of the library. Right there. Fixed yeah. cost. And Does that to, make sense? No, no, I okay. Okay. The fixed mm -hmm. cost need to be allocated. Even yeah. More. Yeah. And then the only the same bucket, but. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and then, and also just as the treasurer, when Allison is doing all of the, the work to, you know, there's a word, I was it's the reconciliation, the reconciling mm -hmm. yeah, of every month. It's that's where it would kind of line up. Yeah. So if we know it's expected, and you know, it helps with communication which all along. Supplies and materials, these expenses are increasing due to the rising cost of goods due to inflation, as well as our increasing for material. Uh, so that was the the percentage increase in supplies and materials, and I think that was a consistent ten percent. For those two. Mm -hmm. Any questions about the operating expenses segment? Okay, and then when you see historical society on the bottom, that's not a separate line item or anything. We're just really excited that the select board is supporting the historical society's use of the old library building. And at the August 21st meeting, we see that the town offered to cover the $100 per month that would cover the costs of the heating and electricity um, for that use. And we just wanted to bring it up to make sure that if that's, if that's within the library budget, <coughs> um, that that's what that is. She says very efficiently. <laughs> So we just wanted to make sure to kind of finish that loop because remember when we left, we said we were going to talk as the as the trustees. So we were able to talk about it and, and we're moving forward with those arrangements. So so the, 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 to close that there. loop out, yeah, because yeah. Corey and I were here to share about the the strategic bridge plan, mm -hmm. and I think the historical society presented right after that. So yep. yeah, including yeah. so to close that loop. So. Um, so we're, we're happy yeah, to look yeah. forward to that. Yeah, Denise yeah. said asked me about that. Yeah, yeah. So, that's so that's um, so that's why that shows up here. Okay. Um, certainly, um, no questions right now. I mean, I, I certainly like when I see uh, you know, a flat budget or flat request. That is good. Um, and as far as these other things, supplies and materials, you know, the cost of goods. Uh, as the budget reflecting that, certainly I'm sure it's something that we will go ahead and, and uh, approve. Um, you do bring up some good questions. The board needs to take some time to figure out where we want some of the expenses to show up. Yeah. Or Nicole's Thank expenses, you. whether it's in salary or, or working or whatever she's doing, but just so that we can have a clear line and we understand the expenses are there. We just need to make sure it's clear where they are again because there may be five years from now different people so everyone has the same yeah. this is what's going on yeah. this is and where it's paid for from and such. Yes and we definitely want to make sure that um, it's clear you know from our standpoint as the trustees and clear from the select board since in five years it might not be those two individuals Nicole and Corey doing it but right now we want to make sure that they do get compensated fairly for it even if in the future those positions do get separated out of right. that building per se. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I agree and I think um, you know we'll look at the, the recommendations of the salaries. Uh, we try to keep things uh, for all in town employees uh, currently uh, 
or COLA uh, salary cost of living usually is, is around the same. Um, sometimes we do other things like um, just a, 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 a salary adjustment. Uh, and that's something that we usually look into. I think we did with, with Nicole mm -hmm. in um, April or May. Yeah. Um, so if we look at something, we'll, we'll probably give uh, salary, uh, co uh, COLA increases, wherever the state is, we usually follow that. Mm -hmm. In the last few years, it's been six or seven percent, I think is what we've been giving. Um, so I don't know what that will be, but mm -hmm. um, we'll come back with whatever that happens to be. And then if it's not making up the dollar that you're asking for, um, we can take a look at that and maybe do um, a salary increase if it, you know there's some justification for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we carry that forward from, from wherever we make those adjustments. Any, so this will clear up just some emails I've been seeing about um, Nicole's uh, back pay. Uh, so any, uh, which we've we tried to, we've switched in the last few years, any of these COLA adjustments, we, we try to just start them right off in January so it makes it easier, so there's no, it makes it easier on the Treasury, so they don't have to go back and make uh, retroactive uh, salaries. Um, because that typically you would do that, you wouldn't do that until the, the budget was voted on until in March. Once the town approves your budget, then they approve you increasing mm -hmm. someone's salary. Um, and then it's after that where we, um, and those, so at that point, any of those type of uh, increases are always retro back to the beginning of the year, uh, a, a cost of living increase. Uh, when we make a salary adjustment, it's going from that day on, if that is not. Oh, that's important clarification. Yeah. Okay. So that, um, and we usually will do those, it's uh, usually the first or second meeting after the new slip where it's been um, built. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, it's just, a, I guess, history zone or whatever, that's the way it's, it's always been, so yeah. we'll continue with that. Um, and that seems to work. Fair. And uh, so, anytime you have those type of adjustments, you think, you know, I know we've worked several times now. I think with Corey's uh, pay in the last three or four years, uh, where we've done those uh, adjustments like that. Uh, so, anything else you want to add or? Questions you have for us? Will they come back in after we? Well, we can. What we'll do is we'll go through um, and we'll, we'll let you know. I, again, I, I don't anticipate uh, not approving your budget. You know, uh, we will once we're we're through. And it's usually it's not until the end of December, mid December, uh, before we're finally through everyone and we've gotten everything through, and then we'll. Uh, make a decision uh, on the, the final budget. But at that point, we'll reach out to you and let you know. Um, oh, that would be great. Yeah. And if there's um, questions you have, you know, we certainly can, you know, or if we, if we go through and there's something that we disagree with or, or need clarification, we'll come back and ask you. But um, don't, uh, we're not here to surprise you where all of a sudden you open your book in March and say, what do you mean? You know, they, they yeah. slash 10 grand or, or, yeah. or something like that. If there's any major cutting or order or shifting around, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, and, you know, we'll give yeah, you. Yeah, that was a question Allison wanted us to ask. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. wasn't sure when, when to know to, um, to hear back. So. Um, typically what we'd like to do is get everyone to go through it, people take it home, digest it a little bit, and then we spend a couple of meetings in December, the end of Jan uh, the end of December, beginning of January, just, all right, let's approve <coughs> these portions of the budget. Um, and, um, so, that's what it is. But if there's any questions between now and then, certainly reach out uh, if there's any explanations or clarities, and we'll, we'll get back to you and let you know where those other pieces are going to be moved to, whether we keep it oh, in, thank you. Yeah. Um, because we will be doing the, the town hall, but so we might as well get that all straightened out. And then, 
people will know. Great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, good to see you all. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Uh, thanks, Sasha. Yeah. I'm going to not knock over the mic. <laughs> see, if Bridget gets the long-term award, she came, she was here to begin this meeting, so. <laughs> uh, I had to, like, leave before bedtime. The, be the bewitching <laughs> hour? <laughs> Get everybody laid down and then, like, leave the house and everybody gets up. <laughs> well, if you guys want to run to Waysfield or Mont or Waterbury for a drink, go ahead. You know? <laughs> That's been long enough. Thank you guys. Hey, there you go. Do you want to stop chairs or anything? Oh, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's already good. Oh, okay. What is it? Oh, I opened it. Yeah, can you close it? Yeah. No, I close it. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> so, all right, so um, we heard. Does anyone have anything that sticks out to them on the budgets or concerns before anyone takes it home and reads it? I don't know. I think the only thing we need to do is, um, and they've pointed out nicely, is, is where are we going to put these changes? You know, let's figure that out as we go through the town hall. Yeah. You know, figure out where it makes most and talk to you guys. That might be the hard part, too, on the timesheet. She's added two more hours, but we don't really know if it's library planning or town hall planning. Right. So maybe there just needs to be to a clarify block that. for just me. I don't know. I think that's what we should do is try to, if it's, if it's going to be one position, we should try to help all of the salaries, hopefully, under one umbrella. Just for the cleaning part of it, because she right. the two hours added, it would be, yeah. we don't know which one it's for. Or just added the salaries under whatever that they were saying is library services. I don't know. I mean, I don't yeah, let's do, let's talk. See what Cheryl and sure, thanks for that. Do with, and, right. I, mean, I think it's just as easy as what Josh was saying, just having you know a piece of okay, how many hours do we have that we're going to do this for? Did you do code it? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. have the yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Like yeah. The road, yeah. just like the road yeah. crew, the road crew yeah. the codes there, stuff yeah. there on yeah. it. Yeah, our police department does the same. Step on, right? Like we're all done. Right. Yeah. You have a yes. client, you yes. build that many hours for that client. Mm -hmm. And you just stick it on the timesheet, so then, I mean, it's all going to go into payroll as one, one right. anyway. Yeah. But yeah. when you put it into your general ledger, you're going to put it where it needs to be. Right. So yeah. it doesn't matter. It makes it's sense. Payroll wise, yeah. it just matters in your general ledger. In your GL. Uh, okay. So it seems like relatively. Um, Small issues. Mm -hmm. So um, we were getting to me for um, reports and communications, and uh, so let me start there. Um, so uh, today I was, or in the last week, working with Martin and now the Star in um, Clarks. It's not Clarks anymore. It's um, Allegiant. Allegiant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so Sean's truck is. Um, we all know it's gone through another um, mm -hmm. uh, the head is gone. Um, so there's two two things that they're willing to do. Um, option one is do another head, um, but it does not. That doesn't seem like a good option because we've done three and it has mm -hmm. not fixed it, and they're not going to do anything different. It's still right. under warranty, basically, is the problem, right? Well, we're not, that, <laughs> we're not the problem. We're <laughs> supposed to be. That's what I'm getting at. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So. But good question. Good segue, Don. Oh. So the other, the other option is a, a new engine, which is the option we need. We need the truck needs a new engine. Yeah. Um, and now the question becomes, who's Who's going to pay for it? Whose responsibility is this? So, um, Navistar, which is international, has agreed uh, to pay uh, about half, 
And so we're talking a $41,000 job. Okay. Um, and there's also for us, our, our half. No, no, our half actually is going to be less. Our half, the whole job is around 41 Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's put out to us that we would pay no more than $17,000. Um, and that includes the engine, but there's also about $5,000 worth of diagnostic work that right. uh, Allegiance has done. Um, and Navistar International is going to pay them. So, um, so it all, it, and this is a six year old truck, six years, four months. Um, started this problem, it was under warranty. Um, so there is, there's, you know, I think if you wanted to get a lawyer involved, um, you could probably go down that route, fight them. It would probably cost you 10 grand as a lawyer, and we wouldn't have a truck in a year and a Five half. Years, probably, yeah. Um, yeah. I think we're, we're in a position where we need to move forward um, because we need that we need the truck. Yeah. Um, I think um, Allegiance needs to put some skin in the game because everything that we're getting is from uh, Navistar, which is the international. So they're paying for half the motor and installation, um, and they're paying for the, for the diagnostics. So the place where we bought the, have the truck is, is really like we're going to get that scot free. Now scot -free. Um, mm. But uh, we don't have any leverage because mm -hmm. we need the truck. They know it. Um, but what I thought is I would at least make it, uh, you know, a shot, take a shot at it tomorrow. I haven't spoken to Randy. I've spoken to um, the local guy from International, and then I spoke to the, the uh, regional manager from Chicago today on it. So it's been working on, and those guys, and those guys actually been really good, and um, they're trying to push Randy to do something as well. Um, but I don't know whether we'll get anything. Uh, what I would like, I would like to get permission from the board to, to move forward with doing the repair mm -hmm. at 17, and, and yeah, I can do some different tomorrow morning and get it less. But um, you know, I, I thought I'd go in off from 12 uh, on that part and yeah. just call it a day. Get them to take five. Take them to take five yeah. off. That's interesting. Well, that's what I was thinking. That, that, it doesn't cost them the five because they'll do it. What they have to do is in the house. Right. Now, have we paid anything for? So far, like all of these different heads, I mean, no, no. it's been all pretty some, much well. Some of it we did, but some of it um, mysteriously out. went away. Right. Okay. Okay. So they. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't think they have any chance. Now, if they do the head and that head goes again, will they fix it? I doubt it. No, it's it's one and done yeah. now. Okay. And it's out of order. So if they do the so motor job. And the motor job doesn't work, and it blows ahead again. Are they going to fix it? I didn't ask that. But if I they put it, that. well, no, I think that, that's yeah. a good question. Um, yeah, what type of warranty? Or... If it's a new motor, we should have a warranty on the new motor, right? Because mm -hmm. it is, it's a remanufactured re motor, but it's, it's uh, what we call new. I mean, it's not something that's bought out of the junkyard. It's, it's yeah. a remand. Um, mm -hmm. So there should be. Have a voice here, but yes, there, there will be when to go forward, I guess, without a warranty on the new motor. I mean, I'm not good, and I don't think Navistar would be willing to pay. pay. Uh, I mean, they're actually it's money out of their pocket, it's not coming from them, the yeah. motor, so um, they're coughing up money to have it done, yeah, and they're, they're, they're going to want a warranty too. Yeah, um, and those guys have been pretty good to work with. Um, and when, when this, uh, when, when was the when was this truck due to what? What's its? When was its lifespan? Yeah, another year or two. A couple of years. But that may be one thing where we look at it, and you run it another year because you have a new motor in it. Yeah. And it has not. You know, it's sat for almost seven, eight months. Yeah. Yeah. It just hasn't been used. 
So you can get a new motor, a month, you know, just get, get a new out. motor, and then, then, the the then the time that you know you you know you didn't use it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So maybe you get an extra year. It was used this summer. Oh no, it was used some of the summer. Yeah, because I watched it get towed into the lot yeah. the last time it died. Um, and then the yeah. um, but yeah, I had Mark calculated though. I want to see how much time we had out of truck. Yeah. There's no. It was between seven and eight months. Mm -hmm. So it's saved a little there. Um, is is there any? Um, have they said that they can have it to us by? No, we're we'll waiting on that. December so he, he actually put, in order to get a date like that, they had to put the order in for the motor. So they ordered the motor today oh. um, to get that date to be, you know, certified. Right. So, um, so we'll, but he thought he was going to have, I can even, let me check. He was hoping to have it to me by six tonight, but. Jason Heckler right here. Uh, hey, Tom. Randy relayed the estimated ship date for the SRC uh, engine remand facility. is January 24th. Oh. <laughs> this can improve, but it is worst case. Let me know if you have any questions. So we're going to be at that truck. See if Martin was uh, on that, so we don't have to check. <laughs> he wasn't, so keep it to ourselves tonight. Let us see. All right, so there. He said that's worst case, it could get better. Um, There's no scenario of like trying to just. No, I remember that was getting the, my last week. That was my last week play, yeah. and I couldn't read nothing. Because you wouldn't get it if you bought a new truck, you wouldn't get that for a year. Right now, there's no the way the market is. Right. Yeah. No, there's nothing available, nothing out there. Nothing available. And I was uh, hoping that the the um, the one that we purchased, the um, what's it, Star, uh, Western Star. Yes. Uh, we, we looked into that to see if that could get here any sooner, but it doesn't even have the body on it, so that would it's going to be next spring. Yeah. I remember for that one. Guys, but I know this is probably a different question, but while they're fixing it or anything, they don't have a truck we can use. I was just going to ask yeah, the same thing. Day. Too. That's a good, it's a good question. I will bring that up. I'm not, I'm not sure they're going to want to do that, but maybe they would. I do know that the guys have asked the state workers if they have extra trucks, and they should be no. Well, they have internationals, too, so they're all broke down. Right. Um, mm. Wasn't, I'm pretty sure that truck was out uh, part of last winter, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So we can tell Martin that we've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is someone's going to get a little break. They're not going to be working all the time. The bad or, news is because you don't have a truck. Or you try to borrow it with them again, and, okay, well, maybe we do the 17 and we get a longer truck out of this, too. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Oh, yeah, that's good idea. No, I was thinking at least yeah. in that way. So we'll start with money, money and then go to the owner and then um, mm -hmm. but that's that's where we are folks. All right, so what do we make a motion that we authorize you to spend well, up to 17. to 17. And where are, do we have to state where we're getting the money from? Or <laughs> no. <laughs> Discretionary fund? Okay. I, yes. I'm going to ask Cheryl. Right now. Now. We might have some. Um, I think we can use ARPA money. Yeah. We can use ARPA money. How about from the capital, capital, capital reserve? Of, it's an emergency. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We can use capital reserve. Yeah, so we can. We can do that, and there might be. I only had there was a, a few dollars left of the ARPA stuff that hadn't been spoken for, but so we'll see what's there. Um, all right, so to continue, I motion or you? I make a motion we authorize Tom to or author, that the select board authorize seventeen thousand dollars for a new engine for up to up to seventeen thousand dollars. 
for new engine for the international. International. Right. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Four. Aye. 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 Thank you, folks. So it's a good thing we have that little, or the Dodge is a little bit bigger truck than, uh, yeah. cause that was gonna, that's gonna get used a little bit more. Um, Less than rolls up. Less than rolls up. Garden grill. Oh, I guess those were. <laughs> yeah, they didn't work as well as we thought. The state is doing temporary bridges too. Oh, yeah. I don't know yeah. if they just didn't think that, that that was an option when they did their site visit or not. I know they looked. That was they something. Did. Yeah, they did look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, this uh, lover's name. Yeah. About. That was my idea too. I thought that was the best idea. Is yeah. the temporary grid, but I'm not the engineer and I'm not the one footing the bill, so. Yeah, no. So that was, I think, pretty much what I had. Um, like to get the select board minutes approved? Well, we, I, I don't know, when you went around ask, asking. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah up time. time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'll keep it, you know, no, no, I usually no, have no. a bunch of stuff, but I'm just going to stick with one thing, which is I really am loving segueing into this after we just had this meltdown with the truck, but to remind everybody we were going to decide about with the construction manager for the program for the town hall project and um, the $7,800 that I'm going to need to work on, that we need to find. I mean, I love the way we have to find money, but um, I either base it on that it's a, something that we borrow or something, and then when we get, you know, this is just going to move us further along in, in preparation for the grants, for the the two big grants that we're going after, the $500,000 Merger grant and the one for the, you know, the library monies that are, that are out there. And so this is not, it's, we're not locked in long term to this guy doing construction. Well, yeah. we'll be, no, this, this firm will be, will do the construction, you know, we vetted out three, well, one firm dropped out, so we vetted out two firms. Yes, this firm will, will work with us as a, a partner in the project. They will do some self-performing, but they'll also get bids from, you know, three mechanical subs, you know, all the different MEP subs, you know, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, or whatever, you know. And, so, and then they'll also work within, they'll, they'll do the cost estimates that we're gonna get. You know, as I, I could read down through the yeah. bullets of what they do, but, you know. Um, and then, you know, yes, there'll be some work that they'll self-perform, but it'll all, that'll be the next phase of the project. We're, we're, they'll provide a hard number from when we finish this design development. That's what we're going to go with. Then we can then apply for these grants. And then in the next phase of work, this firm will be part of that next phase of work with their, you know, their costs of self-performing certain jobs and doing project management and, you know, building the job. They'll, they'll this first 7800 is to get us to see if we're going to get any um, for the grants. Is that no, the first 7800 is for them to they'll be get on come on board. They'll start to work with the design team. They'll start to get some of the uh, mechanical uh, pricing. They'll they'll start to you know say no do it you know they'll look at an item and say no you can do it this way and it'll be less money or we can build it this way you know they'll be part of that process to, to uh, establish the scope of work, and then they'll price the scope of work, so then we'll all have a hard number to do the town hall, you know, renovations, this is what it's gonna cost. And then that's what we're gonna be able to use when we go for the grant section. You know, this is what the lift is, this is what the draft lobby is, this is what the fixing the water mitigation, and stuff like that. You know, it'll all be broken down into categories. Right. But and this is, the, the understanding will be that we're not hiring them for the whole project, right? This is just no, the first no, I mean, no, we won't. You, you, you probably would, but no, it, it, not no. It'll just be this phase. But it, 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 that, it wouldn't make any sense not to, but <clears throat> they'll be within that whole scope. You know, you'll still have an architect on board after the design development. You know, they, they still stay on board in the next 
phase of, of watching, making sure it's designed or answering questions and all that, you know, they don't just go away. They'll still be using the same architectural firm as you would still be using the same construction. Right. Manager. We have to sign a contract with them to say we're well, just for this first phase. No, right. because they'll give you, you know, you'll get pricing for the. It'll all be in the next pricing right. thing of okay. the whole project. You know. But uh, again, you know, it's just a matter of you know where you know where we find the, how we can fund it. So where do you so, see us? Yeah, I need to step out and make a question. Um, we're, I guess in six months, I'm trying to wonder, what, we're spending, we've been spending a fair amount of money on, on, the, on these things, and when are we at a point where we can go to the town and say, all right, this is... We should be a town meeting, have hard drawings and, and a hard price, and probably even know where we stand with the grants. I mean, they're, they're, they were, the library grant thing was supposed, to, is, was supposed to be out this fall, so now the word we're getting is it's gonna be more December, January, and the same with the, the Merca grant, the, the app, that right. physical application. So where we're trying to be is by, not the end of October, but as we get into November, to have you know, to be done with the design drawings, you know, and and start to have a hard number of what it's going to take so that we can start applying for the, for the grants. So yes, by town meeting, we should be able to go, you know, here we are now. I don't think you're going to be shovel ready, probably, you know, by the time, you know, we shake out, I don't think you'll start the project in the fall of 2024, it'll probably be the spring of 2025 by the time you get there. No, I'm just looking at a, you know, a point where we, you know, you know, there's 7,800 here, there's been yeah, 20 there's, here, you know, in this. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. And we need to come to a point where we cut bait or, or, or do the thing. Oh yeah, no, we're, we're, there's no turning back. We're going to fish or cut bait. We're, we're on target to go for these grants. It's the only way we're going to pull this thing off. Right. You know, and, and, and these people are essential to get us to there. To get there, yes. So. Um, because, I mean, so far, these big grants have not gone the way we had hoped. Like the no. project out here, you know, and we're on year six now or whatever, and the sidewalk, we had issues on this side, and then the other side, so you know, we have to we have to do that next summer, you know, so, yeah. but we've got approval, so I certainly wouldn't want to go to the town until we've got approval on oh, yeah, until no. we've got, we know we have the grant right. right. Well, no, right, and also not to, it'd be nice to, to uh, also show the town that we're, we're, you know, 80 or 90 percent of the projects is going to be done through grants. I also was at a meeting today. We have a group of people who are on the town hall committee or subcommittee, and we're working on a capital campaign as well. So you know, mm -hmm. there'll be a fundraising effort. So you know, um, reaching out to people in the community in another way and how they can participate. So that's in the early stages of coming together. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I, guess, um, I know it's an ask. I'm not sure we'll be happy to get it, or if there, it, as I mentioned, if there's a way that it can be uh, some monies that when we go forward with the grants, and, and maybe it can get paid, a percentage of it can get paid back, or when we do a capital campaign, that we can, you know. You know, hopefully be able to, you know, put the put the money back into the capital, you know, capital with capital funds or whatever. Yeah, because we're all already at 104 percent over budget on the town hall. Um, yeah, I mean, we're the whole. Unfortunately, as you go through, and then we just throw on this. Uh, I mean, the other scenario would be 
We finish the design development. We don't do, do the construction management group, which has a lot of advantages as I outlined in that. Right, Or we'll go through design development, have the final drawings, and then we we put it out to a, a, a firm that will do the uh, do an estimate, you know, for somewhere between four and five thousand dollars to give you a, a construction estimate. But that they're just going to take the drawings and price them. It. It's not going to be a part, you know, someone who's part of the team looking for the for cost savings and the best way to build it. It's just going to go, well, yeah, this costs this much, this costs that much. Mm -hmm. Not someone who's going to go, no, you could do it this way and save that. So will he, they be going out and, and getting those prices then? Mm -hmm. You know, no, they'll be pricing it themselves and working with, you know, their trades that they work with getting prices, you know, like three prices for a mechanical or, you know, whatever. And so as far as what would, what would they do, you know, when you talk about their self-work, what type of... Oh, work? what do they do for self and yeah. self? They do, they have a crew that does, you know, carpentry and drywall and, you know, they, you know, uh, demolition and, you know, stuff like that. They, they run, they, they're boots on the ground running the job, working on the job. You know, they'll have a superintendent there and, you know, if they don't handle the job, then they hire out based on contract. If they can't, they, or whatever, right. you know, if they, they can't self-perform a certain item, you know, you know, I can send you a whole thing, you know, about you know about the firm and they, you know, about what they answered in the RFP and stuff. I think I may already have. No, you did. I think I read that. Yeah. But it, it sounds like it's basically it's either seventy eight hundred dollars and they do all the work, or it's going to be four to five thousand and we have to do all the work. And well, no, this, yeah, well, no, they then we'll get a they'll do the work of getting the, the numbers together, but they'll right. work on one guy is just going to give you a hard take a piece of paper and yeah. just give this is a hard number. The other construction manager person is going to come on line to the project yeah. and work towards those numbers, you know, be working on those numbers, you know, and putting it together and finding cost savings and ways to do it. That's, you know, that's part of their partnership in the project. Okay. You know, I don't know how to describe it any better than what I did. I understand. So when we, I'm just wondering if we hire them as the project manager, what's their incentive to keep the prices down on the things that they self do? What's their incentive on their right. self performing? What their, their jobs are? Yeah. Well, first of all, they're gonna you'll get you'll have pricing for what those things are, and they can they'll have they'll have comparison cost. But they'll they'll also price it as well. But oh. they'll have a price from another sub. But, okay, that's. You know. But in this in this day and age, where it's so hard to get different trades, the fact that they can sell perform stuff and will have cost you know a cost narrative, it will, it will find that that's a better route because you know you know find you know to do anything these days unless maybe the market's going to change by the year, but. All right, well, I think for first phase, um, it's probably more cost effective. Um, I don't, you know, I just want to see a, kind of an end to it so that we can get to. Um, I agree. Well, after this next phase, there's an end to it until we, we have the numbers and then we start going to get the, you know, the, get the grants and the, the capital campaign will kick off when we have those numbers as well. Because then we can go to, different folks and say, yeah, this is what we need to, you know. Go to the Wexlers and say, all right, yeah, you know, we perhaps, need a you know, grand yeah. for this. And or, you know, the idea is maybe, you know, people will donate and get their name on the mailboxes that we're going to be saving that they'll be down in the lower level, you know, as a wall. Maybe someone, you know, there'll be some donation for if you make an X amount of donation, your name will be on the little mailbox down there. You know, maybe there'll be someone in town who'll say, yeah, well, I'd like to have my name on the draft lobby. You know, you know, there'll be a little 
plaque for that person or something. Yeah. You know. I think that it's definitely, I think that, that there, there will be support in the community that way. That there's some people in town who will, who will help, uh, you know, who will tell into this. It's good to hear. Yeah. All right. So, what do we have left for ARPA? I, I do not exactly know what it is. Let's, he was looking at me. <laughs> well, look at you. You're the treasurer. <laughs> You're the assistant treasurer. All right. Assistant. Huh? Assistant. I said assistant. So, I know. I, saw the right. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I know that, I mean, this comes up all the time, what we have left and what we've spent. And the numbers seem to change, or we don't, we don't get them. Um, I mean, I, I would recommend that if, if we have enough, we use ARPA for this and use the capital reserve fund uh, for the, the truck. All right, well, I, I think there's at least 8,000 in there, based on what we have. What was it, 78 or 78? 78. Wow. Who's the, so what's the, who's the first? The firm is Naylor and Green. They're out of Brandon, Vermont. Oh, clearly. Yeah. They're actually doing a couple of uh, town halls right now. The one in Brandon, they're, they're doing a, a library town hall project there right now. But, um, yeah. I mean, we did a whole betting sure. floor mm -hmm. thing. Who was the other? Who was the? The other firm is um, Stewart. Construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, we're, we're going back and forth. Nail and Green had the better pricing and mm -hmm. more experience and, and, uh, and such. I mean, I'd love to see, like, send you our evaluation sheets and stuff too. Mm -hmm. I just, it'd be nice to have those for record though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so that it's just shown. I'll those. go through it and make sure that I've sent it to Cheryl. Yeah, make sure the copies there so yeah. that everyone has that. So, John, why don't you go ahead and. Um, yeah. So I'll make a motion that uh, we authorize the expenditure of $7,800 to pay for. Construction manager. Yeah, the construction manager, Mailer and Naylor. Naylor and Breen. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Robin. All in favor, vote aye. 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 Tom, what was that? Was that an aye for me? Yeah, it was an aye. Aye. Aye, aye. All right. And Don, Don is right. I'm sure that people will come forward. It was a a great event Saturday. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was really and, great. Yeah. It looked really good. Yeah. yeah. So. Were you able to attend, John? Yes. Good. And uh, lots of lively talk and spirit there, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I sure was. Yeah. All right. Notice most of the, probably two thirds were from Moortown College. Oh, you think? Oh, there's a lot from Moortown College. Oh, I didn't know. Almost everybody on my, on, on housing. <laughs> oh, from up in the row? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But so yeah I, sent, so I actually sent it out to about 65 people. Uh -huh. that I have an, e an email to get people in town. And it was great to see a lot of folks yeah. come. Yeah. And it was good. I, yeah. It was good. But um, and the performance I heard was good. So it was yeah. Good. Yeah, those guys are good, too. It was nice of them to come and play. Right. And Angelo's meatballs. Yeah, his meatballs were good. <laughs> Randy's bread with them came out was great. Yeah, it's good. All right, folks. So why don't we go ahead? Um, the select board minutes. I think we were going to talk about or pass. Yeah, uh, I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes of October second. Any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Vote aye. 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 All right, um, so now we have old business ARPA funds. We decided that we need to know how much we have or don't have. Um, the trails, again, when did we say when Dave was here, we, we put a date on the board for that, right? Did, did, did we say about November 6th? I don't know. I think we did. Uh, 
the 20th, wasn't it? I believe so. Yeah, you can call it. I think one. it was the 20th. Yeah, that was, yeah. that was very close to home. Yeah, it was the second second meeting. Yeah. Which uh, when, when when is it? The twentieth. Of, of November. Of November. How much um, time would you like on the agenda for that? Oh, probably a good half an hour, forty okay. minutes, forty minutes probably. Because it'll be that'll be long enough to be ready to get, move on after that. Um, in next our next meeting though, we can talk about road uh, class four road. Uh, bring up those policies again and just go over them and, uh, and that'll be good for the following meeting or the 20th meeting and say all right this is our policy on class four it's all the drb will not be there but it's something we need to present to the drb that needs to be in a condition or something when they're allowing uh, class four buildings that they need to sign off on it or something that uh, this is the road policy so that there's you know, you, you mm -hmm. saw we had tonight, and there's always, there's been confusion throughout, and that's why we're trying to play that out. Um, it, it just, in, in terms of also about meetings, I, I, you know, um, just to get back, as we talked about, I gave, gave an update about the scoping study for the sidewalk of Shed, the scoping study for the sidewalk in mm -hmm. North Moortown. So the the um, the next step will be would be on hopefully I know on November sixth. Uh, unfortunately, I thought I was going to be able to come with more information today, but the meeting that we we're supposed to have last Friday got canceled, and now the next meeting is this Friday. But I know you know um, I did get an e an email from Emily Lewis, who's with the boys in King. You know, altern it's called the alternatives meeting. Um, it's gonna, you know, it'll be here. Here, I thought maybe we could try to have it over there. This, just the flyer, it can get changed. They have it down for 6 p.m. But you know, I could when I'm at this meeting next Friday, I could tell them what time. We're gonna How long are they gonna need for it to? I think it's like the last time when we they came to like half an hour. Tops. Yeah, say. 20 20 minutes probably. Maybe um, six. Because you are. Uh, yeah, six or five. So we have the open meeting or general public comment. So right after general public comment. So I'll just tell them yeah. six ten or six so or five. five. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to be North Moortown scoping study alternative meeting. Yeah. Okay. I'll send you this. What what they? Thank you. You know what they sent. I remember they said they were coming back with that. And um. Yeah, if we can, uh, I know there was names yeah, well, uh, that were people were here. If we can reach out to them and let them know, um, and also the the gal that was that came here requesting um, Jennifer Durant. Though she's on the right Mars, yeah, yeah. That's get it to her so they can she can yeah. maybe send it out. And I've also been in touch with someone there who lives there who I've talked to about this already because. They're trying to also get signatures for that letter that we're working on the speed, the slowing speed. So I'll, I'll communicate to her too. All right. Yeah. So we just asked me the other day. So everyone feels like they're having yeah, input involved. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'll work on that this week so that they we need those little babies in here. Yeah. I didn't realize she was a co-principal with Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a good one. Who's that? Jennifer Durant is a co-principal with Dwayne Pearson. Oh, really? The yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. um, and Callie, you're still working on the uh, coordinates or whatever for the buggies, right? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Is there any new business or anything else that we need to address tonight? Or? Well, I haven't given up on getting, you know, I haven't, I, every time I've gone by, there hasn't been anybody there, but what happened to the folks from Pony Farm when they do a meeting? So, uh, you know, I'll try again yeah. this week. Yeah, I, I thought about that again when yeah, I saw I haven't I'm still, still on my list. I went by there the other day and they were 
out there, and they must have been talking about it because they were standing and they were pointing this way, and they were and like, oh, really? oh, yeah. <laughs> "I'm not stopping." You're <laughs> <laughs> like standing, slamming yeah. yeah. brakes on your way. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I know. Size the point. Because there was like three or four of them. They were out there, <laughs> yeah. and drinks, you know. They're pointing at things and they're looking, and then like, "Oh, holy crap!" Well, it's getting pretty close to when it's it switches to winter anyway, so they're yeah, not really going to have the option. And I right. think if they're out there, it's just yeah. that's it, you're done. Yeah, so, so um, we have some warrants and stuff to sign there, Sasha. I know we've got. Yep. We need that thing for you tomorrow. What? The uh, forest meeting? I know, it's a while before we start. Maybe we might send the draft in. No, he, I, I, I saw it. He saw it. Yeah. 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 This is uh, Carol Chamberlain, that's how I'm just saying that. I think we're really lucky on that to be able to get someone who knows what they're doing who. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so quickly, I mean. Yeah. I don't no, know. She's been around. around. She's been around for, for a long time. She starts sending me a lot of Friday emails. <laughs> yeah, she's, I mean, she goes. <laughs> that's me down with my Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's my email yeah. about what's every 10 days. Yeah. Okay. If you can sign that. Uh, I'm sorry. I still want you to sign that. I just, there's two places it needs to be signed. <laughs> Need to have on file for your But there's no, there's no, I guess I can have, there's no place, where am I supposed to answer? Insurance. Because they don't have it, it's not even hot, it's like, it's not here. Just say you decline or whatever. Or you decline. Yeah, you decline. Where is this? Let's see where it's going. Mm -hmm. If you have health insurance and it's somewhere else, it's number two. My employer offers health care. I don't have an employer, except for 10 of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like you to have health insurance. Sasha, thank you. Thank you. Um, it's just yeah, I have to work for me. Oh, you're tired. No, you're not even answering. You put. You can either put the part-time or seasonal employee, and let's see, and I do not have health care. I am covered by Medicaid. I, I know, there isn't, there really isn't a good answer when you're just like, um, I don't know what to put you out of that. I would, I would say it really should be, I have health care coverage that offers hospital and physician services. My coverage is private. provided through Medicare. Do you know where this is? I can't make this guy. That's terrible. I'm not sure. Yeah, where's Derby Farm? Yeah. I've never heard of it. John, do you Derby Farm? What's that? Derby Farm. Is that what we're doing? Yes. Hmm. From the intersection of the road with Maplewood Common. Which is over oh. towards Hartwood. That yes, right. Okay. All right. I mean, yeah, it's fine with that. I just I'd kind of like to know yeah. where some of these places were now. Is. Is oh, yeah, trade off with the numbers. Is all of us here? Yeah. Oops. Who the employee? Did, did she put yes on the 18? If yes, stop. Please sign the bottom of the form and submit it to your employer. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't get that part. Yeah, I didn't get that part. Do you have any idea why she put an X on it? I'm under 18. 
No, it could have been just an error. No, she Maybe. put it on Don's. <laughs> 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 I wish I was under 18, but I'm not. <laughs> so it crossed that out. I'm going to cross yes, it out. Yes, please correct our error. Because, you know, you're signing that you certify that it's true and it does sign off. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I understand. Under penalty of perjury, right? Um, or agree with this. So I haven't um, signed it yet. This is, excuse me, folks, I'm uh, going to bring this up here. So this errors and admissions, it's for uh, the Dana Jenkins life estate. Is changing from 275 to 250, um, 251, and it's because they lost quarter of the year renting the cabins due to permit court case. Yeah. So they're saying the value of the property went down. Oh, Dana Jenkins, it is DKA one traps. Well, he knows that, but. But I don't get where we would lower these it. was this because these things have not been assessed right. as rental units in right. there. Right. How can the value of them go down? Right. This value is still the same whether they rent it or not. Yeah, so well, I'm gonna say no to this and um well, and the thing is is it's as if it will first. Right. So if they were, weren't they planning on renting them this summer? I don't think so. So yeah, that's April 1st, so. Which would be towards next year's appraisal. Right? So if they, if it even mattered, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you're not. So then you're not going to go. Appraise as a rental unit, it's appraise the value of the building. That's right. Point. And you're not going to go back well, next year it. and reassess it, are you from. Right. Well, we rented it five times, so now it's worth this much. Now we rented it 20 times, so it's yeah, worth, Yeah, you know. but the rental has nothing to do. With the value of the property. No, it's That's not like business money. personal well, property. What are they, what they ask you for again? A stuff. decrease in the um, no, value of the property. property because they weren't able to rent it because of our court case with that. Because they didn't have a permit. Because they didn't have a permit for anybody to live there, but now they do. But I mean, now they can rent it. Now they can rent it. Right? But it's as of April 1st. So if it's as yeah. of April 1st, they did not. Then, right. then that, that might count. We might even consider it, but at this point, why so would we consider it? So if you it? buy a piece of land and you get a permit in June to put a house on it, and your house is done in Oops, September. I need to sign a few more of those. Uh, Robin, You're sorry. not going to get taxed on your house right. until, until it's built. the next year, until as of April 1st, right. so the following year. Right. So you're not going to get taxed. If we were going to give them a waiver, it would be next year for this year's taxes, but it's irrelevant because it's not. And quite frankly, I think that takes a little bit of... You, um, you know, Frank, if he rents a property, his, property, his apartments are worth $500,000, whether they're vacant or not, it's still appraised right. at $5,000. And quite frankly, I don't... Um, you know, I guess they can always do what they want, but they may have not been happy with the court case, but I think they got treated quite well. And I think the select board uh, really did them right. And so I think them trying to nitpick like that shows that, I guess, they did not see uh, what we did for them. Oh, I'm sorry. This is going around. Yes. I no agree. good deed should I'll go on. Um, no, I'm glad that you brought that up, because we usually just find the that we have But I like to read them to make sure that the book was mine. Okay. You know, this is the really, uh, the, uh, truck. This one. Yes. For the greater. Greater. The greater. It's just like it's missing you. Yep. Yeah. We people don't understand that a lot of the time. So they. Mm. Yeah, I think maybe they just made it some mistake. Now, if they had, if we were to have the tax on business personal property. Right. That would be a different this, matter. That, that would be a different matter, matter because. It's simply the value of the property. Here. Right, and it would be depreciation. And if we, if we base the 
value the property on what they're getting out of it for rentals. I mean, I looked at it on like Airbnb and shit. And <laughs> But if it's business personal property taxes, it can be right. for yeah. so there's just like an explanation to that, or mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, whoever came up with that and sent it to us, we'll send them an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, omission denied. Basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we send it with some kind of reason. When you say omission was denied. Um, at some point, I would like to have a, an executive session for myself with you guys. Not tonight because it's so late, but in the next month or so, maybe. Thank you, Doke. John Callie down on me. Um, this one actually doesn't have me either. So we can uh, plan that for our next meeting. Okay. And just plan it. Let's do it. It's better at the end so that way we don't need to kick people out. And if you want to send anyone or send us a little recap of what you want to talk about, okay. please. It is a pretty slow. Probably in the next month, I will have gray hair. You'll have gray hair? Really? Yeah. Wow. Is your daughter going to, what's she doing now? No. <laughs> no. I take over oh, as treasurer November oh. 1st. Oh, wow. And I have no assistant mm. going into. Well, you have an assistant yourself. No. <laughs> Sasha, how many hours of work is that? How much your job? So how is it like you were two hours? Going into second quarter tax payments, second quarter sewer and water payments. You yeah. guys just aren't paying enough. That's the thing. You we're not, not paying enough. Yeah, well, obviously not, because otherwise people would be clawing on the door to get there. No one clawing on the door for me. No one. No one. I mean, you get awesome retirement because it's beamers. I'll look into it. Maybe that is something I can get. You get up. You work seven thirty to four Monday through Friday. Seven thirty to three, or so, two Thursday. Seven thirty to three on Friday. Automobile, anything like that? No. No. <laughs> no Craig's the only one. We just cut a check for sixty seven thousand dollars for you. I, if I That's take a job, I need one stuff. of those. That's public works. That's not me. All right. All right. So everyone, thank you for everyone's time and efforts tonight. I appreciate it. Um, if everyone's all set, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Bye. 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 Everyone be safe going home. Who is that? Callie or John? <laughs> John? Who's second? John. Uh, Big John. John's second.